nice for so many people. So we begin, as we begin all good things, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of the Lord, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I want to welcome everybody. I want to welcome, first of all, the Filipini sisters. You know, I, I was a product of the Filipini schools. I went to third grade sister, uh, Sister Raphael, who's my third grade teacher. When I came here, I asked Sister Francis, you know, my first third grade teacher was Sister Raphael. He said, she said, oh, that's my cousin. So we were, she, she snuck me in to see her one day, which was really great. And she actually came to visit the Shrine of St. Lucy uh, after that. So uh, I, was, I was just telling the sisters that, you know, St. Lucy, there's a Shrine of St. Lucy, Philippine, has been here for, some long, for a long time, and then suddenly it disappeared until I came here and found her in the basement, restored her, and put her back to her rightful place. So now we are back to being the National Shrine of St. Lucy Filippini. And we're all receiving the graces that she gives a sister. St. Lucy has been very close to her sisters and to her family. We're all her family since we belong to this church and this shrine. And so she comes to us, she comes to help us. She, the Bride of Christ, helps, uh, tells Christ what we need as well. And she uh, tries to help us by interceding for us. So today, make an intention. Make an intention that for your family, for yourselves, that she may help us. In these times, threatening for religious and for the laypersons alike, it is opportune to propose to the people as an example the figure of a woman whose life was modeled completely on the Divine Redeemer. Her apostolic action, accompanied by supernatural gifts, succeeded in reforming the spirit of those who saw and heard her, apostle of good, of truth, and of virtue. The favors of the Lord are not exalted exhausted. His mercies are not spent. They are renewed each morning. So great is his faithfulness. My portion is the Lord, says my soul. Therefore, while I hope in him, good is the Lord to one who waits for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good to hope in silence for the saving help of God. Let us pray. O oh God, by the grace that comes to us from the Eucharist, grant that after the example of St. Lucy Filippini, we may love you ever more intensely and give our lives to the service of the Church and the building of your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Come, let us adore Christ our Lord and Master. His glory shines forth in St. Lucy. Let us ask Our Lady to lead us to her son. And now we will process into the church.
I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I will give Egypt as your ransom, Crush and Seban in your place. Since you are precious in my sight, since you are honored and I love you, I will give other men in your place and other peoples in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and gather you from the West. The Word of the Lord. With all my heart I seek you, Alleluia, Alleluia. In your will is my joy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. It's truly wonderful to celebrate the birth of our great 
and most beloved saint. And it's so much more joyous because each of you are here today. Thank you, sisters, for traveling to the National Shrine of St. Lucy Filippini on this rainy day. To all the associates who journeyed in faith, to parishioners and friends who are here, and a special hello to all who are making a virtual pilgrimage today. Thank you for coming to pray together and to spend time with our Lord Jesus Christ in his true and very real presence here on the altar. <clears throat> it is here before the Blessed Sacrament where St. Lucy learned true wisdom. She contemplated the mystery of Christ from Bethlehem to the cross to the tabernacle. It's good to look back and to respect the history we celebrate, the life St. Lucy managed to live so wondrously, so graciously, and so truly sanctified, the schools she opened and the religious community she founded with Cardinal Barbarigo. Our response is to continue making history here and now, in this moment in time. The Church has declared solemnly that God called Lucy and entrusted her with a holy mission to proclaim the message of the gospel, to educate to the faith by word and by her life, to liberate from ignorance, and to touch also the most hardened of hearts. Sound familiar? That's our job description. More significantly, that's our mission. And when I say our, I mean all of us who are baptized to proclaim the message of the gospel, to educate to the faith by word and by her life, to liberate from ignorance and to touch also the most hardened of hearts. How are we doing with that mission? Today's a good day to pause and take another look. A little over a year ago, we celebrated the Jubilee of St. Lucy's 350th anniversary of birth. Among the many glorious and exciting celebrations, gatherings, and sharings, we had the tremendous opportunity to study her life and that of Cardinal Barbarigo in light of our own times. One of the questions we were given to pray over was, what message would St. Lucy give to us today? Our responses were recorded, reprinted, and given to us to savor. I'd like to highlight some of those responses today. As you listen to what the Sisters of the Province discerned and so eloquently expressed, apply each thought to yourself so that you may be inserted ever more deeply into the mystery of Jesus' own life and teaching. I hope that you will be inspired when you hear them, just as much as I was when I read them. What message does St. Lucy give to us today? Responding to all that is asked of us with prayer and courage is the only way to continue our charism in today's world. St. Lucy would ask us 
to work to the best of our ability and to continue to be women of faith and trust in her guidance. St. Lucy demonstrated through her words and actions a deep, personal, genuine love for God who called her to be all that she could be in his service. St. Lucy was obsessed with the salvation of souls. Her entire life and all her energies were centered on the theme of bringing souls to Christ, helping them to achieve salvation. St. Lucy's message to us today would be, love God, love God. Emulating her example, we would inspire others to love God and follow his precepts. St. Lucy wants her spirit to continue in today's society by our being saturated in love for God. Nothing else is as important than to live out her mission by continuing God's work for the good of all people. If we ask ourselves why we are here, it is to project St. Lucy's spirit to whomever we meet, especially our students and all entrusted to our care. St. Lucy met the spiritual and corporal needs of the people who were constantly attracted to her holiness. St. Lucy would want us to be united in our diversities, entrusting the future to God, and to make a special effort to be present to everyone, putting aside fear of the future. Our foundress was a very devout and holy woman. She was able to convert and lead people to God because of her goodness. She was a beacon of light to all she met. Her faith in God allowed her to move forward with a strong conviction that God would be her companion throughout her journey in life. The Eucharist was the center of her life. Her strength and courage came from knowing that Christ would not abandon her. We can continue to bring her light into the world by living out her charism and letting her life be known. St. Lucy's message to us today is to live our lives so completely and to liberate ourselves so fully from all things in order to allow ourselves to be possessed by God. We are to trust God at all times. St. Lucy's endless hope in God's goodness in all circumstances carried her through the joys and challenges she faced. Grateful to God for his faithfulness and for his constant love, St. Lucy responded to him with the gift of her life. We too, as baptized Christians, consecrated women, and beloved of God, have every reason to be thankful. We have nothing to fear. These were only a few of the many insightful perceptions that came forth from last year's study that helped us to grow in understanding. We recall how we began this holy hour with the verse from Lamentations, the favors of the Lord are not exhausted, his mercies are not spent. We ask ourselves, where might the Holy Spirit be leading us today? All revealed truths 
derive from the same divine source and all are to be believed with the same faith. With St. Lucy, the gospel message was simplified while losing none of its depth and truth and thus became all the more forceful and convincing. We hear in Galatians, what counts above all else, what matters above all else is faith working through love. We can never reiterate too much St. Lucy's powerful and insightful admonition to all, love God, love God.
Now together let us rise and pray the St. Lucy prayer together. Most divine sacrament, I prostrate myself in your presence with the angels and saints. I praise you infinitely saying, blessed and glorified be the most holy sacrament of the altar. I firmly believe that you, my Lord, are present in the Eucharistic elements. I renew and offer all the acts of adoration made to you and made to be here and in the churches of the world. I infinitely thank you for all the treasures and graces you have granted and will grant to your faithful ones and especially to me. I am infinitely sorry for the sins and acts of irreverence which have offended you and will offend you and all your saints and angels adore and glorify for me, my Lord, here present. With all the praises possible, exalt him with me in all my actions of this day and of all my life and for eternity. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. God, the Father of heaven. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. God, the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God. St. Lucy Filippini. Holy Teacher. Elect of the Lord. Saint of the Eucharist. Beacon light of wisdom. Witness to divine truth. Missionary of Christ. Seeker of souls. Apostle of youth. Safe guide of teachers. Protector of children's innocence. Mother of the poor. Messenger of peace. Hope of the sick. Lover of poverty. Admirable example of meekness. Seraphim of love. Model of obedience. Woman of great faith. Consolation of those who call upon you. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. O oh God, who did select St. Lucy Filippini to instill Christian piety in the hearts of the people, and through her did establish in your church a new family for the education of youth, grant that following her counsel and example, we may attain the reward of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Now let us make an intention. Our intention, why we came here, asking our Lord through the intercession of St. Lucy to give us those graces that we, that we need, those things that we need that are for our family and that are for our community and for our world. And we pray the prayer of St. Lucy. O glorious St. Lucy, who from your heavenly home continue to love souls and recognize their real wants, Bestow your elements upon us, we implore your powerful aid. Since during your mortal life, you have not hesitated to help the poor, heal the sick, have opened your sensitive heart to all miseries to alleviate them. Do not, therefore, let us depart from you without having obtained our petition. Continue to show us that you are still the most amiable mother for all who have recourse to you in prayer and confidence in our holy protection. Amen.
You have given them bread from heaven. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as a memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of the sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the place of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Blessed be God, in his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints.
will proceed to the blessings with the relics of uh, St. Lucy. The relics that we have for St. Lucy were sent to us from the mother house, from, actually from Montevuscone, where she uh, is, her remains are, uh, by Sister Mother Ascenza, uh, in commemoration of, of the centenary, the, what is it? The, the Jubilee, thank you. So uh, if you could come up one by one, I will bless you with the relic. And I'm still wearing my humeral veil, so I'm not blessing you. St. Lucy's blessing you.
I'd like to thank everybody for coming, and I thank uh, Sister Alice for arranging everything, the associates, all the sisters who have come, everybody here. Um, we expect St. Lucy to do her job, right? We expect her to help us in all that we need. So St. Lucy, get to work. We need your help. <laughs>